Is this John? Hi. This is hey. This is John. All right. This well, is Tiffany. This is. Let me do the official introduction, ladies and gentlemen. We are very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is an actor. He is a swordsman. He is a ballet dancer. He's a martial artist. He's done a little bit of everything. Basically, an ex- entertainer extraordinaire. We're very excited to welcome. The Z-Man himself, Mr. John Lazard of the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome, John. Thank you so much. You're so kind. (laughs) Well, I must say, you know, we we do a lot of promotion and and put the word out. And everybody is so excited about you being on tonight. You've got this incredible following. Really? And I know you spoke about that, about how the fans are so loyal and everything. But it's got to be great to be you because people really appreciate what you've done. Oh, I'm so I'm honored. I I don't know what to say. I'm humbled and I'm honored. That's, and you know, that's wonderful. You know, I want to say this right now too. We watched some of your work again last night. And we're always watching your stuff. And mm-hmm. you know, you, you've done a lot of great things. And of course, you're in the genre that we love because we're all about driving movies. We're driving movie radio. But the mm-hmm. ability you have to do any type of film, any type of genre, that it really is too bad that more people didn't use you. Even though you've got a, a great history of incredible legendary films, because you're you better. You're too kind, but thank you. No, you're yeah. better than people give you credit for. You're really unappreciated in my terms. You've really got the acting chops. I mean, you can tell that you studied, studied Shakespeare and everything. You know. Uh, yeah, I, I began. Um, I turned uh, professional uh, at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco, mm-hmm. and. Um, they had the same training as uh, the national rep for classical. Wow. And you know, so, you never uh, know you're going to use that stuff. Like, for instance, I did a little uh, work and, and went to casting agencies. They always ask you things like, do you dance? Do you ballet dance? And, and do you use a sword? And are you a swordsman? And I'm thinking, they don't yeah, really... Can, yeah. Can you sing? Can you dance can you add right, right. <laughs> and, and you never think that's going to come up like they don't make Robin Hood movies anymore <laughs> but it sure as hell came up for you in, in uh, the Valley of the Dolls beneath the Valley of the Dolls because well, you, you want to know the you want to know the backstory? sure do yes of, uh, yes absolutely of uh, how I uh, was so fortunate to uh, get to play Z-Man Superwoman Ronnie Z-Man Barzell mm-hmm. um Really, do you, or should we go to No, no go right to it and, oh, okay. and use as much right, time as I, you I'm need. I'm here. I'm, yes. I, I'm here. I'm, I'm awake. I'm, I'm ready for this. <laughs> um, I had, uh, uh, as I said, I turned pro at uh, American uh, Conservatory Theater mm-hmm. when I was 21. Also, the, the Haight-Ashbury the, uh, was going on at the same time. But I found myself in Hawaii being the only professional actor with the University of Hawaii, and they were doing uh, Albe Camus' Caligula. Right. right. And I, I played Caligula. Wow, that's a great um, role. Jeez. So what happened, yeah, it really is. And so what happened was, while I was in rehearsal, uh, I think it was the first season of uh, Hawaii Five-0, you know, mm-hmm. Abe Rudd, I give him, book him, Dano. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I, I auditioned, and it was a part of a prize fighter, uh, but it was supposed to be a heavyweight. Mm-hmm. I, I was barely a welterweight then. Right. And uh, the part went to a wonderful actor. He's gone now, Denny Miller. Right. Hope everybody remembers him. So to make a long story longer, uh, I also auditioned uh, for uh, Tora, Tora, Tora. Mm-hmm. Fox was scouting locations f- for the, um, you know, the Pearl Harbor movie. Right. Okay, so uh, I have a successful run um, with Caligula. And closing night, uh, this nice little gentleman comes backstage. You know, closing night, it's, it's pandemonium. Right, right, yes. And he introduces himself. He says, uh, 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 Mr. Lazar. I said, oh, please call me John. Uh, my name is Phil Benjamin, and uh, I'm a casting agent for Fox. Oh. Okay. Well, I thought that it was a joke because I was always playing, uh, the director and I were always playing jokes on each other, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, no kid, no kid, I really am. Um, so uh, a year later, 
uh, this was 68, so this is 69, uh, he brought me to Fox and uh, went into Eddie Foy III's uh, casting room, and lo and behold, there was the leering Russ Meyer. Ah. Just one question, and go on with your story. Were you aware of Russ Meyer's work before you met him? You know what? Not really. It could have been that the good nuns wouldn't let me see those. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ponder that. Yes. If we do part two, I'll, I'll have that answer. Okay. okay. Uh, no, no, not really. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, it was almost like the Mae West line to uh, about Cary Grant. Right. He said, he pointed to me and he said, if he can speak, he has the job. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. You had the look, so there you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, it seemed that I had the right look for whatever this part was. Then he hands me sides, you know, sides, yes. five yes. pages, right? And so I look it over, and I'm going to myself, what the hell is this? <laughs> and I go, I said, Mr. Meyer, do you want to give me any, any, uh, you know, uh, what this is about? He goes, uh, no, no, just, just read it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so guess what it guess what it was <coughs> guess what it was it was Shakespeare the Borple Blade goes snickersnack <laughs> that whole speech oh, right. right 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 absolutely that out of context even within context but without a context whoa right? yeah, yeah yeah in fact in fact that ended up being my screen test scene too and is, was, and that, was that I've filmed heard, I've heard my screen test this is one from uh, all, of, all of my colleagues that, is, that went missing. Oh. Mm. So there's some mystery there. Damn. Wow. I'd like to see that. If that was on a DVD extra, I don't know if they filmed that or not. But. Uh, no. Mm. You know, it's... it's but, uh, so that's how, uh, basically, that's how uh, I came to get uh, right. the wonderful uh, part in Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. And you know what's crazy? Because this movie... That has made you so famous with with cult movie fans and, and B movie and drive in movie fans. It's kind of weird because Russ Meyer working for Fox. I mean, Russ Meyer never worked for a big studio, and it was a. Uh, yeah, well, here's the problem. That was a problem. He had supposedly a three picture deal. Um, he only did one. Uh, as far as I could tell. He and Dick Zanuck didn't see eye to eye, mm -hmm. and uh, that was it. Uh, he made, uh, I think, what Super uh, uh, Vixens mm -hmm. for like sixty thousand and it grossed six million, and that's in the day. Yeah, right. Uh, and so that's what brought him to Fox. Yeah, he did uh, seven minutes, and uh, it was a flop. And he's an he's an auteur. Yeah. You know, he does best when he does his own stuff. Absolutely. You know, he's not a he's not a hired gun. So that's that's uh, that's that reason. And then with me, um, because obviously there was some connection with the Manson murders at right. the time, and uh, you know, uh, leading man running around with breasts and the violence. Right. Uh, it was like a year a after. Lot. It was like a year after the Manson murders, wasn't it? Something like yeah, that. It yeah, it was. But but uh, Roger, baby, Roger Ebert uh, took advantage of it, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, what happened was that uh, even though I love the part, and obviously we're talking about it now, it was inauspicious for me, and a lot of Hollywood, uh, in, in a way, uh, didn't want to know. Didn't want to know me. For wow. I'm the first one that did that uh, uh, that crossover dressing. Yeah. Uh, LG. I am. I, I yeah. believe. Now, uh, Michael Caine ended up wearing a dress in what is it? Dress to Kill, the Brian De Palma film. Right. At one point. And there's you know, a crime game. Yeah. Too. Do you do you reg let me ask you if you you regret it or not? Because I've read different no. quotes and some are probably misquotes that have said that you felt like you were typecast because of Z-Man into kind of like freakish roles or whatever. I uh, hate using that word, but that's what the no, quote no, said. No, 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 my petite. No, <laughs> no, I didn't feel I was typecast. For right. a while, I couldn't get cast. Yeah. 
No. All right. I'm not complaining now. Yeah. Why do I sound like I'm complaining? <laughs> I'm a happy man. So, you know, the sons of... Oh, never mind. <laughs> you, you know, uh, the thing is in Hollywood is what they don't understand yeah. is if you get a lot of roles where you play crazy and it's popular, that means you're a good fucking actor. It's not easy <laughs> to play crazy and you're so good at it. Thank you for saying fucking good. <laughs> uh, Oh, actor, too. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a rough life. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, let me give you, a, I'll give you an example. Uh, I, I, I'm uh, going to a, a casting to, to read for a part, right? Mm -hmm. I read for it. Um, <laughs> at the, uh, the end of it, the casting agent looks up and he says, well, you know something? And I, I go, what? He said, you're nothing like that character in, uh, in Beyond the Valley of Dogs. And I, I, I lost it, but I, I you know, I, I, uh, I said, well, you, you know, if I were, you, we would be holding this reading in San Quentin prison. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked out. When, right. when that, pro that probably didn't help my creds in Hollywood, did it? <laughs> I'm learning a lot now. When, when, you, when, you, meet, you. when you meet fans and stuff, do, do they kind of walk away from you or stand a little further because they think you're nuts? <laughs> no. No, as you said before. Oh, were you just kidding a kid like me? Yeah. Did you really mean that? No. Oh, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, a few, uh, few months ago, uh, my Margaret and I were meeting a, uh, a good actor friend of mine at uh, Bob's. Mm-hmm in Toluca Lake yeah. and I'm um, standing outside and this uh, nice young woman comes up to me and she says oh, are you John Lazar and so we took our picture it's on if, if you look at the, my Facebook you, you can see it yes no yeah. uh, fans are they're, they're when uh, they run into me they're, they're just great yeah. They're great, really. Yeah. Now, I haven't had one bad experience. Uh, to talk a little bit more, uh, obviously we want to talk more about uh, other things that you've done, but to talk a little bit more about Z-Man. You can't avoid uh, it. It's yeah, an I iconic mean, role. The thing, even before the surprise reveal at the end of the movie, the thing that I was very impressed with, John, was... Uh, you mean that weird double helix thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing that I was Besides really impressed the, with was was the, the dialogue and your delivery of it. That's That dialogue was not easy. Do you feel that your experience in theater helped with delivering that? Because it was kind of well, like Shakespeare, you, but cracked a little bit. Exactly. Well, here, remember we talked about... Uh, uh, me being at the American Conservatory uh, Theater mm, yes. and getting classically trained, uh, I think that's another reason. That's another reason why I got the role because uh, Caligula was basically a, a classical piece, right? right? Right, right. So, so Phil Benjamin was hearing that. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, having classical training, I could put it to use with uh, Roger Ebert's dialogue. Right. Now you grew with, up with that without a doubt. Right. You grew without up in doubt. San but Francisco. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, what? that's all right. I just gonna say you grew up in San Francisco and you were kind of raised by gay relatives. Did that help you in delivering the dialogue? Because I know a lot of people that uh, you know, most of them are heterosexual or whatever and they play gay. They overdo it and you didn't. And and you knew how to deliver it. Uh, was that because of your relatives you grew up with or? Well, they weren't blood relatives. What they were, uh, and my uh, my father uh, knew a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, and they were like an extended family. Yeah, and they were uh, Asians. They were Hawaiian, Filipinos. Um, just happened that way, and they were uh, a lot of them were involved with the uh, the gay demi mm -hmm. uh, at the time, and. Um, they were just marvelous. In fact, uh, they uh, they had been in the Merchant Marine. that had, uh, you know, the South Pacific. It, it, uh, they were heroes. Right. They had a boat shot up uh, oh. from under them. Two of them uh, were at Pearl Harbor, um, etc. God bless. So it was uh, it was a fascinating. To answer your question, uh, not really. Yeah, I guess in a way, in a yeah. way, yeah, but. Uh, it, let's just say it didn't hurt, but I, I didn't really draw upon that right. 
uh, strongly. Now we were trying to figure out with with Z Man the big reveal in the end. What was he? A woman? Was he a transvestite, transsexual? I mean, what really was he? I mean, he definitely had boobs. You know, <laughs> well, that, well th- that's, that's supposedly the mystery. X chromosome, Y chromosome, ah, Z-man. There you go. Ah. You know, in those days, it was before, right, the, as I said, the double helix or the, yeah. or the transgen thing. So it was along those lines. Yeah. Well, I was definitely. so impressed by the effects and they were done by the great John Chambers who won an Academy Award for Planet of the Apes and Johnny Chambers yeah you, you who, need, knew, who knew he who knew he was in the CIA he was you don't know that what no. was that uh, movie with, with Ben Affleck yeah oh, okay wow <laughs> he, did, incredible. he did make up he did make up for the CIA oh, oh, I'll be damned yeah. John Goodman played him uh, what's the name of the movie in fact one of my co-stars Adrian Barbeau was in it wow oh. that's incredible but anyway, when when well, first of all, I don't think you knew you were gonna have breasts because if I'm right in understanding that Roger Ebert kind of just changed the ending towards the end of the film and it kind of went off the rails and went, you know. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, no, no. I, 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 I signed on, and I was even sober. <laughs> <laughs> and in retrospect, I shouldn't have been. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Uh, to answer your question. Uh, I, I love that part. Yeah, right. I had no fear of it. I did, you know, I didn't know there'd be a little bit of fallout here and there. You know, what did I know? My joke was, uh, you know, I was so new to Hollywood for the first two weeks. I thought I was shooting a western. Yeah. <laughs> Bada boom. Okay. W- all right. Maybe you can cut that out. <laughs> no, we're uncensored. You can say whatever you want to say here. Uh, uh, I maybe- wish I could. You know, I really wish I could. I wish I had the freedom. You know, no, I'm kidding. Right. But what what was the process? Can you tell John Chambers' secrets? I mean, I, I guess it was a latex prosthetic, and they strapped it to you. And you said, yeah, that's but yeah, basically, <laughs> incredibly painful. Yeah, we we shot the uh, Russ uh, pretty well. He tried to shoot in sequence, and as you know, with movie making, you sometimes you sh- you start with your last scene first. Right. right. So that was that was helpful. Um, so it was the last two weeks. By then, I was really into the role. You know what I mean? Right. Better than the first day on, on the <laughs> shooting. <laughs> so, uh, uh, first, uh, first, I'd have a four o'clock call. Go to Dan Streepex, um, head of makeup. He did all the effects for Leonard Nimoy on uh, uh, Mission Impossible. Right. Uh, and then uh, they'd shave my chest. And then they slapped this stuff on me. That's when you know you're and in the game. Yeah, that, th- this is for yeah. real. Yes. Yeah. And uh, there we go. And they'd have a new one every day because it, it would get you couldn't use it. You really couldn't use it twice. But basically, it was a latex kind of thing. Right. Let me ask you a crazy question. Did you have? You haven't been asking them before. What? <laughs> <laughs> So you look at it for the first time. Did you have a desire to fill yourself up? Because I'm <laughs> telling you, I, I oh would have God. thought about it for a minute. Um, it's possible to take the fifth <laughs> or have a fifth. <laughs> I mean, you can't help you touch it a little bit. <laughs> what are you? What, what is this? A gotcha show? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Here? My God! There goes my career again. <laughs> So let me ask you. Uh, as I feel myself up. <laughs> <laughs> as, My God! As a, as a thing to ask a gentleman, a yeah. distinguished actor. Such as <laughs> a, yeah, distinguished. You real distinguished. Shut the fuck up. Well, at, at least okay. you, at least you got an honor of knowing. Are we going to talk about other things? What else about dolls? It's interesting. Um, <laughs> Well, I wanted to know uh, what it was like, because you worked with Russ twice. You worked with him on, on Dolls and also in Super Vixens. Super Vixens. Super Vixens. Okay, super, here's Super Vixens, okay. right? Super, you want to go to Super Vixens? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, he was back to his, uh, his e- evil ways again. Uh, <laughs> no license sh- shooting, shooting Indy in uh, the Simi Valley. And uh, he called me up and he said, you know, uh, you want to do this? And I said, yeah, okay. And he let me, uh, I improvised. Uh, you saw Super Vixens, right? Yes, and last yes, night, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
if I may pat my own back, I uh, improvised all that stuff while oh. driving. While wow. driving, I mean, that, and and yeah, and the whole the snake, the whole thing. Yeah, he let me, he let me whale on it for a couple of days. Now I, I gotta know. The oh, fight, to use boomer speak, whale. Right. Yeah, <laughs> the, the fight scene uh, was that you in the fight scene, and I want to know about the rattlesnake because man, that looked great. Oh, I uh, the one thing. Uh, you know, I've been stunted with falls and other things, but I do my own fights. Wow. Uh, I've, I've never been stunted in a fight scene. Never, 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 never. That's King Lear. Wow. That's different than Russ Meyer's Lear, Lear. Yeah. And it's not Norman Lear. <laughs> oh, come on, bail me out of this dead air. Did you hear that? One, one thousand, two, one thousand. I mean, you guys are pros. Uh, well, I know you got... My career is in a balance here. <laughs> I know you've got a fairly new friend, and we love her too. She was on the show a couple of times. Adrian Barbeau, that you acted with in uh, Alice Jacobs is Dead. What was that experience like for you? Oh, did you have Adrian on? Oh, yeah, we we had a couple couple years ago we had Adrian on. She revealed to us that her horror icon ex husband, uh, who did Halloween, you know, that he's uh, afraid of bats because they had a bat come in the house one night. He ran around the house screaming with a towel on his head. (laughs) And this is the incredible John Carpenter, you know. So. Lover. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So what oh, was it like so, with her? Oh, I'm going to tell you something. Well, um, she wanted to work with me. She said, "I, I, I heard right, mm-hmm. right." And uh, this was uh, based on uh, Max Brooks, Mel Brooks' uh, son's uh, World War Z, mm-hmm. right? Before uh, before Pitt did it, mm-hmm. right? Okay, and. Um, this is in uh, what? Oh wait, yeah. Uh, a young uh, writer director gets hold of me, and uh, then uh, got Adrian on board, and uh, I'm very proud of it. We won. Uh, we won the Comic Con uh, horror short. Wow. Oh nine. We won Coney Island Film Festival, Atlanta, um, and Louisville, and. Uh, uh, it's one of my favorite things I've ever done. We have to see that. And, and, and Adrian, it was really funny. Uh, Adrian and I just we just really hit it off. Uh, one of my uh, favorite leading ladies. Yeah. Well, I know just, you got to work just, uh, with a couple other great ladies. Did you uh, did you see uh, Alice Jacobs is dead? We haven't seen it yet. No, we want to. We oh hold man, of it. you know it's 22 minutes. It's on YouTube. Oh, is it's it the uh, full thing is on YouTube? There you go. Yeah, All it's right, the well, horror short. We'll go you watch that the, right now. We'll be right back. It, it, it has a, <laughs> it has a nice thing. George Romero, um, before he died, put yes. a nice little. He liked it. Wow, the great George Romero. What what can I say? Yeah, it's too bad you didn't get to work for him. He he's a great guy too. Uh, we had luck. Well, I him. I did a I did a cult uh, documentary. He was supposed to be in, and he passed away just yeah. before. Uh, well, I oh, know you haven't seen that. You haven't seen that. Oh no, we will tonight. We, we will. promise. We, will. That's, that's well, we could we could go watch it right now and come back. Because we want <laughs> well, stuff. It's, 20, <laughs> it, it's twenty-two minutes. Oh, please see it. We no, will absolutely. It. When we have a guest when, uh, on, we watch stuff like all weekends, so we spend a weekend with you. Oh well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> now I wanted to ask you because after. After uh, dolls. Uh, oh, by the way, hold it. May I cut you off? Sure, of course. You know, you're talking about some of the over-the-top roles I've done. Uh-huh. Uh huh. This one is a my character in it. I'll just say this much: it's extremely introspective. Uh-huh. It's one of my quiet pieces. It's one of the reasons I wanted to do it too. Outside of the statement it was making, etc., etc., etc. Right. Maybe you like movies it's and stuff. A puzzlement. Maybe you like movies and, and maybe you like movies and TV shows. But to me, you had a, a face for soap operas that you would have fit in very well. Really? Yeah. Well, that's because every time we see you on screen, John uh, Terry goes. John is I, a good-looking uh, man. <laughs> oh, thank you. I did Macbeth with uh, Eric Braden. Does that count? I guess. I, that, I think so. You know, you know, Young and the Restless. Yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to ask you though, because boy, I, I, I was, I was so determined to do a material. 
<laughs> Where in the alphabet are we, am I now? <laughs> we don't go in order. You're doing, you're doing great, John. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. I did want to. You've got to see Alice Jacobs. We will. Yeah, we will. We, we will. will. my soul. We will see right. it tonight, and so, I will report back to you after we so see come it. So come on over tonight. We'll watch it together. We live in the mountains <laughs> up here. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could. All right, where where else are we going? Well, I wanted we to I wanted this? to ask you a movie that that you did that doesn't get mentioned a whole lot was after Dolls. You did a, a movie with uh, Zsa Zsa Gabor, right? Every every girl should have. Oh one. yeah, it's a rom com. It's a rom com. Yeah, it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, Yes, I, I was the lead in Every Girl Should Have One. And that, what was interesting about that for me at the time was I got to work with some of the people from the Golden Age, the old timers. Right. Yeah, Alice Faye. Alice, Alice Faye was, she mothered me. Yeah. She mm -hmm. mothered me. And she, I, I, I'm sure she was being kind, but she said I reminded her of Tyrone Power. Wow. That was her great leading man at Fox. Yeah. Right. So she yeah. was the biggie just before uh, Betty Grable. So that was great. And then uh, who else was in it? Robert Alda, Alan Alda's dad. Uh, he'd originated uh, Guys and Dolls. And uh, I'll get the Jaja. <laughs> and then there's uh, what? Bill Boyette, who played every cop there ever was. Right. One Adam Twelve. <laughs> right. And, and the great Herb Vigran. You'd know him, character yeah. actor. Now you want to get to Jaja? <laughs> I want to get to Jaja, and I know you had. Uh, did you see her on the Eastern Front? <laughs> uh, Jaja was Jaja. Yeah. Right. Uh, she was very nice to me because I think uh, I'm the star of the fucking show. Yeah. Right, right. And she okay. liked me. That's right, she did. And she had one of her husbands, some uh, uh, Count to Monte Cristo sandwich or something. But what was funny is she, uh, I'll give her credit, she's like do the door state. Uh, she was very much into animals. Yeah. She had this little. I don't know what it was. The smallest dog you can imagine, a right? Schnauzer or something. And then, well, yeah, what was I thought amusing about that, she named him Genghis Khan. <laughs> 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 wow. Well, I, oh, you can pet, you know, darling, cause yeah. this is, you know, Genghis Khan, you know. And, uh, however, do you remember the great... Uh, George Sanders. Oh yes, absolutely. Mellifluous George Sanders. Yeah. Uh, it was like he was a, a serial marrier of the Gabors. Yeah, he married right. Magda, he married Jaja, right? Right. And unfortunately, he, he committed suicide. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, his suicide note was, "I've done everything. I've seen everything. I'm, I'm done. You know, bored." Yeah. Well. Um, I think the greatest thing to take out of this rom-com, uh, we were on a break or lunch, and uh, persons or persons unknown uh, went into her dressing room, uh, took her own lipstick, and on the makeup mirror said, George Sanders was gabored to death. Oh, my God. Oh, really? Wow. Damn. You can imagine the screaming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I think Jaja could create a scene if oh, she wanted man. to. Sure. Well, Jaja was a scene. Yeah. <laughs> Jaja was a scene. I do know you made a statement that back in the day when you were younger that everybody thought Shirley Temple was great, but you thought Alice Faye was greater and you got a chance to tell her so because she was like your idol. Yes, I did. I did. I said, uh, she knew I meant it. I said, uh, when I was uh, at... Uh, when I was at parochial school on Knob Hill in San Francisco, thank you very much, <laughs> the uh, French Catholic school. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, they'd run Shirley Temple movies. And I'm about the fifth grade, and I'm going, who is that beautiful woman? Yeah, Alice Faye. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah she only, only in this art form, only in this business, you never know who you're going to turn up working with. Right. I have Alice Faye's autograph. By the way, I love it. Yeah, she was married to Phil Harris, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Uh, a sad note on that. We had a pickup week. Uh, it wasn't a happy shoot. Mm -hmm. You know, if you could do a comedy, try to be a little happier. Yeah. Right. But that's another story. Uh, what had happened is that uh, Bing Crosby had died on uh, mm -hmm. the golf course in Spain. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And actually, it, it wasn't Hope and Crosby weren't that close. They had a working relationship. It was uh, Phil Harris and Bing Crosby yeah. and Alice Faye. Right. And, um, oh boy, she just she just collapsed. Mm -hmm. I hated to see that. Wow. That's horrible. Where well, did you find out about the... Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, did you see that movie? Uh, no, but we will. I'm, I'm just making <laughs> what, this? What, did, what, what did you just see? Super Vixens? No. Let's, let's call up some idiots. <laughs> We have nothing to do with Saturday night. You, you, what is with you two? You you work for every. I don't want to be chastising anybody tonight. <laughs> you, but the guy's got to protect. We himself. almost know you by proxy, John, because you've worked with almost every director friend that we've had on the show, from Jeff Burr to Rolf Konevsky to Jim Winorski to Fred Olin Ray. We've had Roger Corman on, who uh, produced a film that you were in. It's almost like your family. Film, I at worked this point. in. I, I did more than one. I, I starred more than one. Right, but it's almost like your family at this point because it was like your credits is like I. Well, know I want a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> well, you send your favorite director. No, no, no. Big Jim Winorski, Fred yeah. Olin Ray, great guys. Right. Great uh, you, guys. you said your favorite director to his face was Russ Meyer. How do you rate the other people like Jeff Burr? Well, they're all they're all different. It, you know what? It would be like asking me who's my favorite actor right. or outside of myself. And and that was for Eddie Presley. Bada boom, I thought of myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dot, dot, never mind. Okay, you are. <laughs> should have let it go by the first time, and I should have <laughs> picked up on that. A now, late with cues lately. In, in 2020, you kind of, I, I need to say this better. I wanted to say you return to your crazy roots, but in a way, you did, because you're, you're acting over the top again. As Mary Warnoff told us, it's called kabuki acting, uh, for something called sadopsychiatrist. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and it has a killer drag yeah. queen and all no, that fun did stuff. Did I play a drag queen? No, no, I no. It it it's about a killer drag queen. The show. No, no, no. He, no, here's the thing. Six episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the COVID thing. Uh, it was the uh, 50th an uh, anniversary of Dolls coming up, right? Right. So actually, uh, I played myself. I played myself having a nightmare that the 50th was coming uh, on, and then I realized that I shouldn't worry um, because uh, I was with Criterion. Yeah. <laughs> which Criterion picked up dolls right, in, in, right. Uh, in 2016, and that's just like Casablanca. <laughs> so that was the gag. I was surprised playing myself, uh. having a nightmare, <laughs> sitting up, and I call... I call a girl named Kansas, who in real life directed me in a music video, uh, and that was it. So, I like having fans from, uh, you know, the toughest customers to, to the gentle people and everything. Right. Well, here's a movie that actually has a Facebook page, and you've made it clear you're not a part of it, but Death Stalker 2, it seems to be a big favor for Roger Corman and... and People really recognize you for that film. You think you're recognized for that as much as the Russ Meyer stuff? No, I'm not, but it's very high up there. It's very high up there. Uh, by the way, I choreographed that sword scene. Wow. wow. That's what I mean. I do my own. Uh, John Trelesky and I, we started doing it in North Hollywood Park, and we rehearsed just about every day in Argentina yeah. at the Estudio Bares in the Don Cruato section of uh, Argentina. Um, and I'm proud of that. You know what that was. Talk about uh, Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. that, was a, that was an homage uh, to Robin Hood. Right. To Basil Rathbone and uh, uh, Errol Flynn. Another day. Agreed. We really worked on that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I know that the so sword and dial looks so real. Did you ever have any close calls or incidents, even though you're an expert at it? Uh, no, uh, going back to dolls, uh, I was almost killed on dolls because I'm standing on my mark, and you know the scene where David Gurian uh, tries to commit suicide? Right, yes. yes. Okay, well, yeah. they drop a 80 pound dummy off the catwalk, and it damn near hit me. Ooh! Mm. Okay, and uh, also going back to every, uh, every girl, the stunt coordinator on that was the great Kim Kahana. Uh -huh. He was a Korean War hero, and he really pushed for safety. I'm all for safety, and uh, no, let's see, uh, no, not in fight scenes. 
Uh, no. I mean, making no, movies. We're very like careful. I, co- I we choreographed them very well. Uh, the sword scenes went off. Uh, we shot for like eight, ten hours. Yeah. In uh, in Argentina, what's I going to say about that? I will say something though. Uh, uh, you know who I work for. Uh, we were promised a gym. We li- we we lived in a. Uh, it was the Club Hindu. It was a great golf course. And the weekends, the uh, aristocracy uh, would come. Mm-hmm. And we had the ninth floor. And all during the week, we never got enough hot water. As soon as it was a weekend, we got hot water. Mm. Uh, but so how we got a gym, um, there was sort of like a Melrose. People uh, don't know L.A. You know the Melrose area kind right. of thing. Right, right. Upscale, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I was bored one night. Uh, so I just went off and I went into you know one of these shishi places and there was this uh, nice looking young man with etc and uh, asked me over because he, he had recognized me so it turned out that uh, he had a gym uh, <laughs> and it, it was right near right near where we were where we were living uh, had padlocks it's not like 24-hour fitness, but yeah. it would do for our purposes. Right. The only thing is, he wanted to spar me for it. He was the uh, light heavyweight <laughs> oh. Taekwondo champion. Oh. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Here's here's what it was. By the time we got to that gym, we were both so drunk, <laughs> right? You know, I think we were on Johnny Walker, and some elderly person with a walker could have just blown us over. <laughs> <laughs> so... See, I, I always try to play it safe. Yeah. See how safe I play it. What, what do you think? You know, there's, all this is on the news about the movie Dust with Alec Baldwin. I mean, yeah. how did that happen? I mean, you know, especially when you've done so many things and nothing ever happened to you. And it's just sad, you know? Yeah, it's sad. I really I really shouldn't comment on it. I'll, I'll just say that it looks like, uh, as other, uh, other professionals have, have said, that protocols of... We're certainly, that's an understatement, we're certainly uh, adhered to. Right. right. I don't that's think you I answered say. my question about the, the snake. I'll, just t- all right, I'll speak for myself. All right, okay. go ahead, John. Mm-hmm. Every time I've been handed a gun uh, by the armorer, mm-hmm. right. I still will check it. Yeah, right. you should. That's all I'll sure. say. I, that's, that's just my personal yeah. uh, thing. I don't think no. you answered my question about the snake. How is that done, the rattlesnake in, in Super Vixens? I mean, a lot of times I know they have the snake attached to you, and then they pull Oh, I it wasn't off. trying to dodge the question. Oh, no, no, I don't think you were. Is that important to you? <laughs> well, uh, amazingly, our, yeah, our nerd... We got movie nerds. They love all this little stuff about how they did something. Oh, I... I okay, this is going to be a letdown. I don't remember how the hell we did this. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it turned out well, so that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, obviously it wasn't a real snake. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, you know, I'm not that method. <laughs> well, what, I... What, 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 you know, he you know, goes up to the director and he goes, uh, what's my motivation? I just can't, I can't <laughs> find the man. What's my motivation? Your paycheck. Get the right. Yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> well, I understand Russ Meyer was kind of like a hands-off director too, right? Like he, he wasn't real vocal with telling direction and, and notes. Uh... Yeah, sort of like, uh, no, he wasn't. Oh, with notes? Yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. Got a lot of, uh, uh, I, I personally got a lot of uh, script changes, a lot of pink pages and stuff after lunch. Right. But that's that's uh, Mr. Ebert, Roger Ebert. No, the only thing is, uh, yeah, if he, uh, he let me, uh, gracious enough to let me do my thing. Mm-hmm. What about, what about working? Step, he wouldn't. He wouldn't step. You're right. Yeah, you're right. He wasn't. He he he'd leave you. He'd leave the actors alone. Yeah. Unless he felt there was something not working. Yeah, I heard you he couldn't never, blink. He, he never you interrupted. Know the, you know the, Yeah. He couldn't blink. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I tell our listeners a little bit about that. I had read about a blinking a blinking issue with Russ. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want you to blink. <laughs> blink. He'd cut away. Oh that's, my. That's when he'd he'd say cut. That's incredible. Yeah, and I had read that that kind of got went back to uh, some of his early work for whatever reason. He just he didn't like the the whole blinking thing because that was a cutaway, right? Yeah, 
Very interesting. So, what was it like as a serious actor working with with all these women? Like, for instance, in in Dolls, okay, there there was Dolly, okay, who was uh, the wife. I don't know if she was at the time, but wound up marrying Dick no, Martin. No, she wasn't. She wasn't. She was she was dating Dick Martin, uh, who I got to meet at the uh, towards the end of his life. He was he. I cracked him up, which is I'm so proud of myself. He wow. thought I was extremely funny. Yeah. Unlike you two, I can see. <laughs> I'm quitting. I, I just channeled Don Rickles. I, I, I won't do that again. I, I, I had I R- Rip Taylor if on. If you promise to see uh, Alice Jacobs is dead, you I will. will. You two. We will, tonight. Uh, well, where, where were we? I lost my own train of thought. I, I was just saying that... that oh, I, oh, yes. Don, yeah, wait, wait a minute. The wait women. A minute. The, the Dolly tour. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't th- think I've had so much fun. She and I just hit it off. Like brother and sister, so beautiful, and then that whole that you know that ends up with that. What's that? That line? Uh, it's it's uh, my. Uh, oh, help me with that line, will you? What? What? It's my happening. Uh, it's my happening. Oh come on! It's my happening, and it freaks me out. Right. Right. That's the iconic line. That is yeah, the iconic go, line. I wasn't That's what everybody s- comes up and says to me. I wasn't going to step on your line. That's your cue, yeah, John. Yeah, we like you to say it. Well, I said it. <laughs> well, I got to find out. Okay, working with Dolly and and working with with Edie Edie Williams. Okay, was, was got, there, you know what? I know, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> some people think Edie can be difficult. That's you know. what I've heard. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, well, I guess maybe she. Can. We got along. She seemed to like me. Right. I, I lucked out. So you didn't have any ego problems with any of the women on any of those shoes, right? No. Well, oh, great, Cynthia. No, no. Oh, now, I've been waiting come? all night to ask this. Okay, so here's the big one Uh-oh. for me. Uh-oh. I am so in love. And, Do I need a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I am so Uh-oh. in love with, with Marilyn Chambers. Now, you did Up and Coming, did, and they didn't tell you it was a porn? Okay. Okay. I knew you guys were going to ask me. That's right. Because <laughs> I think a lot of people so think I, you did I porn. Went, I, went through, I went through back to some, some of my creative neurons, mm-hmm. and here, here, here's what happened. Okay, here's the real deal. All right. Okay. Here's the skinny. Okay, my agents uh, approach me, and they go, John, Marilyn Chambers wants wants to work with you. <laughs> okay. And you're thinking, so okay. So what was going? No, no. What was going through my head was these these guys should cut back on whatever they're drinking and smoking. <laughs> And I said, you want me to do porn? <laughs> and they go, oh, no, 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 no. No, she wants to go legit. She wants to go legitimate. Mm. And I said, uh, okay, well, all right. So I, I signed on. And uh, lo and behold, there were two versions, weren't there? Mm-hmm. So as Bogey said to uh, Conrad in... Uh, uh, Casablanca to bring that up again. Uh, why why'd you come to Casablanca, Rick? And he said, well, for the waters. Yeah. Well, it's a desert. I was mission formed. So uh, I didn't know that. Right. So let, uh, let me ask you. As far as, wait, no, let me go on. Go as ahead. far as uh, she was, actually, she was a very nice lady. Yeah. Very nice lady. Remember, at one point, she had done the uh, uh, print ad with, with the baby, with, with the, uh, right. the soap Right, tumor, yeah. Uh, Ivory Snow. Now, uh, tell me that's not tell me that's not a stretch. And she right. did what? some legitimate films like Rabbit, you know. So she didn't do all mm-hmm. porn. Yeah. No, no. But what I want to find out is when you knew what was going but on. But however, I, I've got to tell you this. Though, okay. The name ahead. of the production. <laughs> the name of the, I didn't mean to cut my uh, you off or anybody off. It's okay. But here, the name of the production company was Miracle Film, <laughs> and the logo was. If it's good, it's a miracle. <laughs> now, Godfrey Daniels, okay, it was something W.C. Fields used to say, and his name is on the crest. Godfrey Daniels, ah, yes. Is that Martin? Right. Is that Martin Greenwald? Do you know Martin Greenwald? Martin Greenwald. Yeah. Wow. He told me that was his movie. Whose movie? Uh, Martin Greenwald, who was he supposedly did Insatiable with. Uh, Marilyn Chambers. And Up and Coming. And he said that Up and Coming was his film as well. But, of course, his name is nowhere to be found near the movie, but There's it could be Godfrey a, a, with a, all due, a non With all due respect, I don't know of whom you are speaking. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, I, when you're doing I Up and Coming, 
and, and you're getting involved. Yeah, what about it? And you're, you're finding uh-huh. out that it is porn. Did they try to pressure you into doing a porn scene at any time? No. <laughs> no. They hid it from me. I would have walked. Right. So you not only... Well, I think... And, 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 well, also, uh, well, I, I lost two idiot uh, agents over it, too. Mm. Right. I wasn't happy. It's incredible. You not only have the honor of having the smallest breast in a Russ Meyer film, but you're the only one in a Marilyn Chambers porn that didn't do Marilyn Chambers. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you should get an award for that. That's incredible. That's right. Wow. That's right. Can I hire you as my PR man? Because you know I'll never work again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I said there was a soft, charge? a soft core cable TV series Can you work on spec? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most of them do. No, not most of them, but some of them. Uh, what about Click? Okay, that was a soft core cable TV series that you worked on. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah, I wish it were shown here. And we're not talking about the Adam Sandler. Right. No, no, no. no. Uh, this was for Corman Saritsky. It was based on... Uh, they had adult uh, uh, comic strips. Sophia Loren started in one of them. Yeah. Mm. Do you know about that? Uh, no, no. I actually... I've heard I, of this, I, well, but I haven't been able to see it. was a cartoon it. character in Europe called mm-hmm. Fez. He was a Fez, and he was a, um, he was a professor. Right. So... Uh, you know, I I I uh, done I how many leaves uh, for uh, Roger Corman? They brought me in, one of the casting guys, to to see how I was against type, and um, I auditioned, and un- unlike my performance tonight with you, I had them laughing so much. <laughs> I'm kidding. I had them laughing so much that I I was offered the gig before I could get out of the uh, to the outer office. Wow. You know, I appreciate so you said that. You said it in jest, but when people do interviews, they ought to teach actors how to do interviews. You know how to do interviews because it is a performance, and a lot of them come on and just and you ask them a question, they're like, "Yes." Yes, I'm loving this. Interview. <laughs> well, I want. Can we get a record deal out of this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get an EGOT, you know. So I, I gotta get a, I gotta get a Grammy. I gotta get an Emmy. I gotta get an Oscar, and I gotta get a Tony. You know, I don't even have any of those yet. Mm. Uh, but th- no, thank you for that compliment. Where was I? Okay, so Click. I'm I'm very I'm I'm proud of cl- uh, Click because um, let's see if I can give you the character of it. Uh, they they really dress me well, and <laughs> coincidentally, he's supposedly. Uh, University of San Francisco professor, mm-hmm. and he has this gizmo like a remote control, and, and and if he presses it, people become sexually aroused. So that's the sex comedy of it. Oh, okay. right. I gotta see that. So the way I approached it, the way I approached it would be like Gig Young channeling Peter Sellers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not kidding. I'm a serious. Despian. Wow. <laughs> with a, with a, with with with, with a, without uh, whatever you call it, memories. <laughs> well, you know, you had that look. I think part of it's being. You know, in Cats, somebody sings memories. I have to sing memories. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Bada boom. You, you had that look. I'm going to bring back vaudeville. You know. Yes, that. Why not? absolutely. Well, you, the timing well, is well, you, I heard you are working on a one-man show, so that would be perfect. Yeah, I am. You know what? May may I throw in a. Uh, uh, my Margaret, my wonderful Margaret, retired yes. teacher, 34 years, Inglewood, her father, um, the, the whole family educators, I'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, she co-wrote a rom-com with me, and it's uh, loosely based on my loose youth, and we're going to have a lot of music in it. And if you thought I was being a little witty tonight, there's a lot of that in there, and it's, a tr- it's basically based on a night. San Francisco in 72 um, but there's also an amalgam of of my uh, life at that time well there's your record wow. deal you know you can do the soundtrack sounds the good soundtrack. well the only thing I can't do is I can't play myself yeah but you know you got that look and, and I guess that's why you fit in really well with the Bible project greatest heroes of the Bible because you're American Indian and you kind of look like you belong back in those days what was it like working on? I heard you had a blast. You got to work with great people like Ted Cassidy, and you didn't get to work. Oh with man! Oh oh okay okay okay. Did I pa 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 pa? But um, Lurch. <laughs> yes Ted Cassidy, yes. Was, Ted Cassidy was one of the most well-read men I've ever known. Really? We had a lot of time to sit around, and of course the great John Diener. He played uh, the King of the Philistines. Yeah. You know John Diener. Sure. Yes. That guy's done. 
mellifluous voice, one of Peabody. I mean, uh, just uh, uh, those two guys. I just had a great time. A great time. And I guess one of your regrets is not having a scene with Russ Tamblin. Was it for that project, or was that something else? Uh, Russ, I met Russ a few times, talked to him on the phone. We had name above the titles. I uh, forget his name from the My Three Sons, 460-foot centerfold. Mm-hmm. So we're in the same film. Um, I was the lead of that, uh, but we never worked together. Yeah. Right. And, of course, uh, with the demise of... Uh, the, the great child and adult actor Dean Stockwell. Yes. I know. Yeah. They, yeah. they were good. They were good buds. Oh yeah. Um, boy, I, I'm I'm so glad that uh, I, I I can say I was in the film with Russ Tamblin. Yeah. yeah. Are you, you get, kidding? Did you ever get to meet Dean Stockwell? Because we we love him so much and we're so sorry that he's gone. Uh, let's just say by uh, Kevin Bacon, six degrees of separation. Uh, you know Figaro's. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know, the restaurant? Yes, the restaurant, yes. Okay. Well, in the day, in the early 70s, uh, I, uh, I think I made a habit of the ham sandwiches and sangria and, uh, and, and the, the girls. <laughs> so I'd be a, a fixture there, and I'd, with all young actors. And Dean Stockwell would be there a lot uh, playing chess with Bruce Stern. So that's a spoke. <laughs> really? Uh, there's another yeah. guy that I love yeah. so much. I'm so happy. Well, it's still a true around. story. Would I yeah. make up something like that? No, no. I don't think no, so. I don't my think own I don't. aggrandizement. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you like doing Attack of the 60 Foot Centerfold? That was fun. Did I like doing? Well, with uh, with Fred. With yeah, Fred with Fred Ray. Ray. Yeah. Fred Ray's a really good friend of mine, by the way. Well, give him my best. I will. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Fred. I, you know, I love shooting that Glock of his. It's Every once in a while. Right. I know you said the question you don't like to be asked, which makes me want to ask it. <laughs> is given. He's just, I he's do a, need a lawyer. He's just a masochist. Order That's it. what this is. <laughs> what is your advice for actors coming up in the business? Oh. You're going to make me do that? Yeah. <laughs> That's your typical question. Uh, have a total fire in your belly. Experience life. Educate yourself. Learn your learn your craft or sell an art. The the, the usual right. advice one on one. It yeah. it it, uh, it works. Uh, you know, uh, be a be a professional. Yes. Which of your Take projects it. did we not mention that you wished I would have? Oh God! I you ask me these things. Uh, listen, you you suck me into the Maryland Chambers thing, right? <laughs> so, uh, what else? Well, I, I wish people could see Click. Uh, Alice Jacobs is dead. I'm really proud of... Well, you know, I, I don't put down anything I've done. Right. Well, right. uh, what else? You mentioned Death Stalker 2, Dolls, of course, Super Vixens. Um... I know you had a great role where you played a warlock. Was it fun doing well, that? That was a music video. Yeah. That was for Madden, uh, 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 Modern World. Mm -hmm. You can check that on YouTube, too. Yeah, I did that a couple of years ago. Yeah, you know that you've fun. done a lot of stuff when it's on YouTube. because. <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? So I By the way, I've... Uh, yes. I've I've considered since since uh, I haven't gotten over my first childhood. I'm not worried about my second childhood. <laughs> but this year on my birthday, uh, I've I've done a, a mental thing that I'm going into my act too. Let's see what creative, what nonsense, what trouble I can get into from here on. Yeah. Perfect. Because you know I was just going to ask your, you with your with your permission. Yes, of course. Uh, I was just going to ask you as we wrap this up. Uh, it's it's a perfect segue because I was going to ask you what's next for John Lazar because you know so often people are like oh well because I don't you know. and I have we have a psychic we have a psychic we do. Link. that's why you were going to ask we do yeah well uh, you know I'm I'm open to work in front of the camera and uh, Margaret and I want to start a production company based on this film. And then um, 
There's a film, The Life of My Father, I want to do. He, nice. he had a very interesting life. Yeah, you sound like a great yeah. man. Yeah. What about uh, what about your kids, John? Anybody in the in the entertainment industry? Uh, I don't usually like to talk about the family. Mm. No, that's that's fine. That's I fine. understand that. I understand that. Because I you know I want to pre- protect the the guilty, the innocent, and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've definitely got a lot of female fans. I know there's a lot of them that, that wrote us and said they wish you would have done the porn scene, but. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah. So they were they were disappointed in that, but you were very great. Well, there's night. a couple of guys that probably still could have been my agent. <laughs> I, I know the one scene you did where the older country singer was pawing at you. You'd have had to well, get me really drunk. To yeah. Have, uh, one one last question before we go because uh, listeners, uh, oh, yeah. I'm getting. I thought we just started. What, <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> well, uh, listeners are what's blowing. Wham bang! Thank you, ma'am. Thank <laughs> what is what, what's it with you guys? Listeners are blowing. All right, what's the last thing? They're blowing me up because they don't want me to let you go before asking you what it was like. You worked actually with him in two films. What was Charles Napier like? Oh, Charles Napier! Damn, he's great. Chuck Napier? Yeah. Uh, well, he, he was great. Uh, uh, we had uh, in uh, 1990 uh, we were honored at Royce Hall mm-hmm. for dolls. Right. There were over three, four hundred kids out there, college kids. Um, so I was between David Gurian and Edie Williams. And, yes. And it was a comic thing. She kept, you know, gesturing with her hand. I kept ducking like a boxer. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> But we had uh, a lot of people there, and uh, I found, I, I didn't know, I didn't hang with uh, Napier that much. Mm-hmm. We were always, you know, friendly on the set. He was an extremely witty man. Right. And then I ran into him at the Egyptian, one of Russ Myers uh, in the late 90s, <laughs> and he had his arm, one of his arms, up in, a, you know, one of these super casts, and I said, he said, uh, Chuck, what happened? He said, I got in a barroom brawl. Mm-hmm. I said, you're ancient. What are you doing? T- <laughs> 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 All right. To answer your question, he was great. He was, mm-hmm. he was So he guy. wasn't really like, uh, it was really great, the transformation. You see him in Dolls. He wasn't really honed in his character yet. In Vixens, that's a Charles Napier that everybody knows. That's like when his tough guy. The thing, rough and tumble guy. The, the rough and yeah, tumble guy. Yeah, you know what? He was kind of He was kind of wasted in Dolls. It, yeah, it, it, it was not too much. He, not too much he could do. It was like uh, it was too passive. Hugh O'Brien. Yeah. You know what it reminded me of? Hugh O'Brien in uh, uh, "There's No Business Like Show Business." Yeah, Mickey Gaynor's like husband. Right. Oh, by the way, Hugh O'Brien uh, was in Greatest Heroes of the Bible. Yeah, he's a great actor. He was a great, great guy. He, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he, uh, he and I had the sword scene. Yeah. He, well, I'm the general of the Philistines. Right. Right. But it's I nice love to the, know I that love, I, I love the line John Diener because when when uh, Lurch is coming in, he goes, "He's your man, Haycar." <laughs> <laughs> One well, of my all-time favorite lines. Yes. Well, it's nice to know that Napier was. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. It was yeah. playing uh, Tubi. Is that how you pronounce that streaming? Uh, Tubi. 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 Yes. Yeah. Tubi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, fr- uh, Fred's movie, fr- uh, Maxim Security. Yeah. There you go. Did you see Maxim Security? That's yeah, we're, we're yeah. putting all these down. We're going to be seeing them. Well, that's uh, yeah. It's sort of like uh, <laughs> it's sort of like uh, Die Hard meets Under Siege. <laughs> you know, I just sort realized I, I, I'm I'm kind of a you know a charming psychopath, uh, right. kind of a Tommy Lee. Jones. Right. I I just realized I'm looking at myself. Well, I mean, if if if. Fred's such a good friend. You haven't seen one of his uh, movies. Fred's right? made too many movies. Do you know how many Fred movies Fred makes a year? Yeah. <laughs> Is he still doing them? Yeah, he's still oh, doing them. Oh, he's going to do them till he drops. Yeah, he's still doing them. Yeah. Okay. Fred's a lot nicer guy. This is just my opinion. Fred's a lot nicer guy than Winorski is. Minorski came well, on the show and made an ass out of himself, but Fred Fred's a decent person. He's been in studio. And what, did, what did Jim do? Oh, he's sweetheart. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll have to talk to you off. You're not going to get me in the middle of that. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 Is, this, is this how we're ending? Or, you know, <laughs> if he was still you know, alive, I'd, I'd ask. A beautiful friendship. If he was still alive, I'd, I'd So, when, well, what did Winorski do? 
I can't tell you on the air. No, I'll tell you later. <laughs> on it, the air? I thought he was on the air. Well, he was on the air in another show and just made a jerk out of himself. If our oh. friend uh, was still alive, Napier, I'd ask you to get him to kick his ass for me, but he's not around. <laughs> 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 he'd probably do it. What the hell? <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, I got along with Jim. I mean, is there you know, anybody uh, you didn't get along with in, in your whole big, long, illustrious career? They're not that long, and I don't know how illustrious. I, I have a few more good years in me, don't you think? I uh, do. Absolutely. I do. I, I want to tell you seriously, amongst all those beautiful women, particularly in Dolls, you stole the movie. You are an incredibly... I, did. I said it before, but you're an incredibly underrated actor. You've got Thank you. that Shakespearean chomps and, and the whole regality to you, and you definitely don't need to retire. I mean, you obviously are feeling good at 75. You sound like you're 35. So, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I don't think I look a day over 74, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bada boom. You know, I'm bringing back Barbell. You guys won't help me with that. <laughs> I, I uh, wish yeah, to God I looked look like I'll tell you, then, yeah, you're good friends with Fred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leaving, I'm not trying to compare. Don't get me in the middle of that. Yeah. Uh, I've always found Fred very generous and really a great guy. Yeah. Right. And he appreciates and old Hollywood. You can tell him I said that. Yes, absolutely. Pardon me? He appreciates old Hollywood, too. He's like you. He has a respect for yeah. the old days. And, and in his position, he has a chance to cast him when he can. And that, that's a that's Well, a cool you know thing. something, uh, quickly, uh, like I said about my father, he's a lot of things. Uh, gambler, uh World War One emigre from Iraq, from because I'm half a Syrian, uh, but he also uh, had a famous. Uh, he was a famous da uh, dancer, the Apache, mm. and he did uh, stunt work, and so he he, li he literally knew a lot of the greatest from silent films on. Yeah. Wow. He was born in 1908. Fantastic. Wow. Well, it was a great interview uh, for Cult Radio, and hopefully if things go well, uh, it's supposed to be in a national uh, print newsstand magazine called Videoscope Magazine as well. That Tonight's we interview. Yeah. Tonight's interview is going to be over there in the magazine, sold all over the world. So you're going to get a lot of coverage, and people just loved hearing you tonight. I mean, you got a lot of people. Well, thank know. you. Uh, thank you for, for asking me. I, I, I've had a wonderful, how long was this, five years? No, uh, an hour or what? <laughs> it, was an about, hour. it was about an hour. I think we're at an hour and maybe two minutes. Hour one minute and forty nine seconds. Yeah. It well, it it held my interest. It did. <laughs> it was. You know no, that it's. I, you know right, that it's no, been. Right, right, I'm trying to. Be, I'm trying to be serious. Mm -hmm. Call me a serious actor. Thank. No. Thank you for. Uh, for uh, having me. Absolutely. It was. It was an. <clears throat> it was an honor and a privilege, John. And I will keep in touch with you. We would love to hear about future stuff Please that you do. have you know going what? on like, too. Yeah. You two. You two guys are. Or all right, you, I, I've had a very good time. Someday, good. maybe when all this madness with disease gets over, you can come in studio here, uh, up in uh, Lake Hughes, California, which is not too far from Santa Clarita. You're in L.A., right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, west Side. I'm we, a West Side boy. We could do it in person. Yeah, so we're like 45 minutes from you. Yeah, not too bad. Well, we, let's set it up. That would be wonderful. Yeah. All right. All right. I would be honored, honestly. You had okay, so are we going to... Is this a wrap? Are we this is a wrap. You had a great career. I still think you should have did Marilyn Chambers, <laughs> but, you know. All right. Well, we'll have to discuss that another time. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you so okay. much for the... Thank you so much for joining thank us you. on You're the welcome. show, John. Have a great rest of your weekend. Same to you. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.